hello, it's me. It's me, I'm a dog, and I'm also a mermaid. You think I'm just a dog, but if I zoom out, you're going to see that I'm actually a mermaid. So uh, today is a day in the month of May, which means that it's mermaid time. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to draw a bunch of weird animals as mermaids because... Because, right? I'm tired of seeing the same pretty ladies being like very beautiful and attractive uh, mermaid with like seashell bras. This has been overdone. Today it's not what <laughs> I'm gonna do. Sorry, Ariel. Um, not today. Today is. Uh, a day where we have fun together while learning amazing things. So in the chat, you might you may suggest animals and I might or might not draw them depending on how how interesting it would be as a mermaid. So uh, greetings, Alexa Rice and Anderson Paternina and Renee Rivers and who else is there? Aha, there's more people on YouTube than on Twitch, I see. And um, yeah, and as I do that, as usual, if the chat has anything to say, um, um, I will help you out. So if you have any questions about Harmony or something, I will also assist you. Um, and uh, yeah, so does anyone in the chat has a first idea of an animal I should... <laughs> mermaidify because it's fun if not i will do a potato and you don't want me to do <laughs> a potato mermaid It'd be weird um let's see we have can i draw mickey mouse as superman no because today i'm drawing animals as mermaid that doesn't count mickey mouse as superman is not a mermaid um so what i'm gonna do then is I will draw a um, I will draw a ferret as a mermaid because ferrets are funny. Ferrets are very long animals, so um, it's gonna be a very funny, funny little mermaid. Um, I like how ferrets <laughs> they have like this silly small head and silly small eyes and big snout, and then like they can be either very long. Um, like with their little paws, and then <laughs> they just go on forever. Cause that's what ferrets do. And they have this little little stubby tail. <laughs> so they look like that. But then when they are like contracted, <laughs> they look more like um Sometimes you need an onion skin in your life. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when they are like contracted on themselves, they kind of look like oh, this. <laughs> and they have like these tiny, tiny legs. And then it gives them this very big like pear body. And um, yeah, that's why I love um, <laughs> that's why I love Ferrets, because they're cute. So that's what I'm going to draw as a mermaid. So since it's a mermaid, it's important that part of it be fish, because that's usually how mermaid goes. You know, you have one half something, the other half will be fish-like, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the ferret and uh, give him a surgery that's going to make it mermaid. So to do that, I will take the cutter tool, and I will slice a part of it off so that then instead of having a, uh, a ferret, we have a ferret mermaid. So, of course, I will take this part off and I will make it fish-like. So, I will give it a fish face. So, now it's a ferret mermaid, right? That's how it works. That's how you do it. 
<laughs> Mermaid animal. Maybe I should give it some little fins. Yes, that will be better. By the way, the tool that I'm using is the tilt shading brush, and it's one of my favorite because when I draw with it, it allows me to do some very cool shading by holding my stylus to the side like this. And if I hold it, uh, like, you know, if this is my tablet, if I hold it up front, it's going to give me a very, sh uh, very sharp line. But if I hold it on, from the side, it's going to give me much more of a pale line. So that's what I'm using to do my lighting and stuff. And um, so if I color my little ferret now with my with the side of my pen, I can give it some nice little textures here. It just helps make your um, animation a bit more textured and nice to look at. Again, don't like this. There we go. That's a ferret mermaid. I'll give it some little sparkly eyes. And now it's all happy. Little shimmers because it's a sea creature. Okay, what else should I draw, friends that are in the chat? Okay, well, if no one suggests animal in the chat, I'm just going to keep making them more and more cursed. So, what else can I do as a mermaid? Um, what if I took an owl? So owls are pretty cool because they have a weird face. They have these like weird beak and they often look very angry. I'm gonna give it some I'm gonna give it some angry eyebrows. And a tiny tiny beak. And this one, instead of being a mermaid, it could be like a big fish, you know, like a big <laughs> blowfish. And also in the chat, does anyone have any questions? Please let me know because I can maybe answer them if you have any questions. Oh, oh, we have a suggestion in the chat. Um, a mermaid squid. I see, I see. A dodo mermaid? Oh, I mean, dodo is not a aquatic animal, so that'll be perfect. So, um, yeah, let me just get a dodo reference because getting your reference is always very important. Oh, those, those are fantastic animals. All right, all right. So the dodo birds are pretty cool. And they have this weird face. It kind of looks like an, a bird like stuck its face into a vase or something, like a flower pot or something. They have these big beaks. So I think that's going to be very interesting as a mermaid. <laughs> So that's the face of the dodo. And they have it like like I said, they have a very, very, very like <laughs> flat face, but they have a very furry hairdo. So since it, it's underwater, I'm gonna give it some much needed fluff. And it's gonna have these tiny, tiny wings that are not very useful. Then again, very fluffy for the dodo part. 
then it's going to have a very, very glamorous fish tail. <laughs> What I like about drawing mermaids and sea creatures in general is that since there's no floor, it's so easy to just give them very dynamic shapes. It's very fun. Oh, maybe instead of being like a dolphin mermaid, it can be like a shark mermaid, so I have a shark tail. That could be cool. Give it some little scales. And then, as usual, with the nice brush, we can give it some nice shading. So they have a very, very dark like, tip of the beak. So I'm going to give it such much-needed textures. So people often think of Harmony as being just a software that you can just uh, animate in. But a lot of people um, like to design in it, too, because it's got very nice... Um, painting capabilities, uh, not painting, I mean drawing uh, capabilities, and some nice textures that you can add. So, yeah, sometimes you don't you don't have to use Harmony just to animate. There's so many different things you can do with it, uh, such as design and stuff. So sometimes, you know, when animation is just not working, uh, nothing stops you from just picking up uh, Harmony and just doing some little doodles. Yay! Because it's a really fun thing to do. And uh, I'm going to get another color now to do the tail. And to do that, I like to use the um, fill tool like that to color my uh, animation. So I'm going to go on the color art and just make my little colors. Yay! That's starting to look like something. I'll give it its little face mask. Do, 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 do. The reason why I'm coloring it kind of like uh, in zones is because I wanted to keep a kind of a um, kind of a hand drawn feel because I like to keep my textures in my fills. That it looks great like this for example you see there's like a little ragged texture at the surrounding that's the that's what i want to get uh, as a look for today so yeah oh it's so fashionable and also because you know my animation is not like my cleanup is not really a cleanup so there's a lot of a lot of holes so you know it just it's just easier to do it like that I think it would look better if it was going more like this. Yeah, definitely better. I'm going to adjust my line work because, you know, it's harmony and you can do that because it's easy to just adjust your line work. Right, I'm going to look at the chat for a second, see if I'm not missing anything. Um, and the hippopotamus as a fish, I could do that. Um, hear me out, porcupine blowfish mermaid, that could be really cute. Um, A centaur mermaid, human torso, horse body, two sets of flippers. That could be great. Okay, I have lots of suggestions now to work from. I'm going to round up this dodo real quick, and I'm going to jump onto the other ones. And it's great because with each animal, I'm going to try to include like a little feature that, can, that I can teach you more about. Uh, that could be great. There you go, wonderful. And what I'm gonna do, I'm also gonna give it a little um, 
um, stomach tuff. And before that, I'm also going to paint its little arms from a different color. And what I'm going to do then with this, it will be very interesting. So I'm just going to do this. And since this color can be on top, what I can do is take another color, maybe like a color that is more pale, and I'm going to give it a little tummy, maybe with a little yellow, because it's great. And to do that, I'll use the stencil brush. I'll, I'll use it with the overlay brush mode. And the stencil brush is what you can use to give some... Um, it's basically using the, the your brush as a clipping mask. Like that. So it's going to only give texture to what you draw it on. It's kind of like in Photoshop when you use a um, clipping mask, but then you don't need to create a new layer. You just use your tool. And that's another reason why I love to design in Harmony is because I can just um, use colors and then I can just experiment with them so easily and uh, build it from there. So it's a great tool and you can also use that tool uh, and by locking your layers. So I'm going to lock all my colors, I mean. And then if I unlock, for example, just a torso color like this one, I'm going to unprotect it. And if I make a new color and I go get like another color here, if I paint using my brush, it will only repaint uh, the colors that are not protected. So it's very great to be able to do that. So instead of painting also my tail, I will just paint my... Um, Body. So makes it great. So what do you think of the Dodo Mermaid so far? <laughs> I like it. I hope that you all like it too. Okay, so now I'm going to jump on to another um, oops, another animal. I just want to unlock my colors. No, oh, that's cute. Okay, what's next? What's next? And I know in the comments somebody has suggested an inverted mermaid, but we already have one. We have this ferret mermaid. It's, yeah, it's a ferret mermaid. Um, let's see what we had. Um, I think somebody asked for a hippo and a fish. All right, so I'm going to go get a little <laughs> hippo reference. I think with the hippo, what I'm going to show you is a very cool... Uh, feature for FX animation. So, you know, hippos, they are big and they already live in water. So that's kind of cheating, but oh, I found the best reference. Okay, so hippos, I, I like to draw hippos and rhinos because they're very bulky and um, they have lots of interesting shapes in them. So I'm just going to go grab my brush and I'm going to try to find a place where I can put the rhino. Um, I'm going to try to make all of them fit here. It's going to be easy. Like this. Get the little fish, bird, owl fish here. This one can go here. So I have this room that I can fill with a hippo um, thing. So hippos and rhinos, like I said, they're great because like when you draw them, like they will have like tiny, tiny eyes. Usually in like a little, oops, I don't have my right brush. Oh, what am I doing? There we go. Um, yeah, they'll have their little face. And very, very bulky nose. Like, honestly, an, a hippo mermaid will probably look a lot like a, a manatee in a way. I love manatees. 
My Manatees are so cute. And they have these big, big nostrils. And they have these square, like, teeth. And the trademark, very cute little ears. So yeah, I'm using my, 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 I'm keeping my stylus uh, angled a lot to the side because I'm doing something very rough. And then without changing brush, I'll be able to finish and polish my animation a bit more. And they have these adorable like folds like that, that makes them very, very cute and bulky. And I think I'm gonna give it a tiny, tiny tail. This is really cute. Yeah, that seems about right. I'm going to polish it a bit more. Then again, that's the same brush that I'm using, so I don't need to change my tools to do my clean and my little um, shadows. And on purpose, I'm using always very different styles for all of them, just to show little variety that you can do. And, you know, it's also a nice exercise um, to try different little styles. They have little Shrek ears. <laughs> so cute. I'll give it a few hair on its head. Not too much. Don't forget to flip. And then you oh, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. Okay, let me finish this little face and then I'm gonna check the chat. Okay, let's check the chat. <clears throat> um. Okay, no question, no questions. All right. Thank you, David the Gnome. <laughs> I don't like the eyes though, I'm gonna change them a little bit. Oh, that's much happier. Smiling now. See, that's way better than little cutesy sexy mermaids. We're drawing cute animals. And they're all happy. So the feature I'm going to show you with him is if you were animating a splash in FX, um, sometimes you have very, very close in-betweens. So I'm going to show you a little trick that you can use to clean up your very close um, in-betweens. Now, how do these paws look like? Oh, they have little toe beans. So cute. I gotta give him some little toe beans here. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but when you draw, depending on how you, you, you hold your stylus, this can affect a lot of uh, how your drawings uh, appear. So try to pay attention to how you hold your stylus. You might, you might discover a few cool things. 
like I hold my studies differently depending on the job I'm doing, either if it's like roughing or cleanup and stuff. So yeah, fun and adorable. All right, I'm gonna give it a little color and uh, be done. I'm gonna make it mm, green because green is cute. Go my color art, of course. I'm gonna cover it. I'm on purpose. I'm gonna go a bit overboard just so that it looks even more adorable. Let's get a little white face like this. Or maybe a bit darker. Just that it teeth come out real good. Sometimes I like to just lay layer like basic colors. And after that I change them um so that it fits. It's great to just explore different options because colors are a discussion. You're, you're just trying things all the time. And then maybe you find happy little accidents, like a famous painter once said. Yeah, I think that looks cute. Oh, uh, should it have a little pink nose? Yes, but not that tint. <laughs> Actually, I'll make it better like that. All right, and um, so what I'm going to show you with that little um, hippo is uh, when you do effects, let's say I was doing a uh, water splash. Usually effects are done with a pure vector for many comp reason. And if I was doing a little splash, um, animation of this little guy maybe he's he's preaching out of the water because he can so if i was doing like a splash animation um sometimes when you when you do your splashes or something uh you can draw them like this and then when you make your other frames um like your other in-betweens Sometimes it can get a little hard to actually in between <laughs> because of your onion skin being on top of one another. This is especially true for FX because when it's a character, we tend to have more like dynamic poses in between the poses. So it's less very, very close in between. But then when you're doing FX, sometimes, and also when you do like a character, uh, oftentimes you're going to have like an actual line art that you can onion skin in between. In FX, it is common to work in shapes instead of just the outline. And then, you know, if we make, if this is a cloud, we can just like remove some parts, uh, but we, we, we remove it afterward because sometimes it's easier to think uh, bits by bits like that. Uh, but when, but that's it. But when you work with big shapes, then it becomes easy, kind of hard to onion skin it to do your clothes in between, which is why um, you can get your, wireframe mode and um, this will allow you to um, oops. Oops. <laughs> let me just fill it with another color than this one just want to make sure that everything is the same color and then you unite them under the same you have to flatten them, otherwise it gets hard. But then, yeah, so I have my outline. And when you do your onion skin, you have your outlines like this. 
so that when, if I want to do the drawing that is in between there, now I can just go and quickly do my in between without uh, with seeing exactly what I'm doing. And you know, it just makes it a lot easier. And then if I need to fix a little things, I can take my brush, set it to auto flatten, and then you know, just go do my little correction. And then I'm sure that I am always uh, in check. You know, we can also get your eraser here. Erase what you don't need. And you know, it just makes it easier to see your very close in between. I use it a lot for FX, but nothing stops you from using it for your characters as well. It's just that I typically use it more for my FX, but even for characters, it's very great for very close in-betweens. So in the chat, is this something you were already doing? Let me know. I don't know. We'll see. <clears throat> <laughs> if I can choose a tool again. So it's not really a tool. It's just that when you draw anything in the software, um, say if I draw this blob, um, and I fill it with paint, um, if you take this, you can go in your timeline and you have a square here called the outline mode. And this will give you the outline of your shape. If you had the complex character, like the fish I drew earlier, the little mermaid things, um, if you would activate the outline, it would get a bit more um, crazy. You know, so like it's not made for everything. Um, but this gives you like an outline. <clears throat> Typically, the outline is used more for vector layers because, you know, it's it's easier because, you know, they they have an actual outline, right? So if you do that um, <clears throat> and you make another frame, then it's easy to just see the surrounding, which helps you do your cleanup. The great thing with the outline is that you can also use it um, with your onion skin. Um, like this, and you know it works just as a, as a normal onion skin. You can like lower the opacity and all that. Because also, if you don't use the outline mode, you can go into your onion skin, and you do have the colored outline. Um, but the problem with this is that you don't see your current layer as an outline, so sometimes it can get confusing. Um, But um, yeah, there is also an outline mode for the onion skin. But the, the also the other thing that is less great for FX is that um, even if I remove this drawing here for a second, you can't lower um, the opacity of your onion skin if you set it to outline because the goal is to keep it as uh, visible as possible when you use it uh, like this. Because if you want to, it, like if you want, if you use the onion skin with the outline mode. Uh, your like the purpose of the tool is for it not to react to the transparency because you want everything to be opaque. If you do want it to react to the transparency, you just use the um, regular onion skin, but you set your layer as a wireframe mode so that you can uh, use it just like it would be uh, any normal layer. If you don't want to see the colors as well, you can use it as a original colors onion skin, but. When I do FX, I do love <laughs> to use my colored uh, onion skin. All right, so let's see the chat. Uh, did everybody get it? Is it confusing? Did I break people's brain? Um. I think that's it for that tool. Yeah, it's a pretty useful tool to do your effects with. Um, and I thought I would share it today. Yay! So I'm going to go back to drawing my silly animals. And each animal is teaching us something about harmony, right? <laughs> so where is my animals? Yeah, so um, 
we had the hippo teach us about the FX tool. This one taught us about the cool textures. Um, oh no, where's my FX? Come back. There we go. Um, ah, there we go. Yay. Okay. Um, and then the, you know, the <laughs> ferret taught us about the cutter tool that you can cut things with. Oh no! <laughs> and uh, what is the next animal I'm going to draw? Um... I won't do a wolf because I already done a dog. Um... Let me see on Twitch. Oh yeah, yeah, porcupine as a as a mermaid. Oh, I can do that. It can go into the little corner here. It'll be cute. So porcupine are cute and very small. And I like to draw my porcupine with little flowers on their head because they're even more cute. Oh wait, a porcupine or a, or a hedgehog? I'm sorry, I'm gonna draw a hedgehog because they're the cutest. Okay, so it's got these little eyes. A little nose. And it's just going to be a ball. What do you think of that little porcupine? Hmm. I'm going to fill it with a nice yellow or beige color or something. Maybe blue. Hmm. Or maybe instead I can give it a texture body. That would be cute. With the dry splooches brush. You see, there's so many different styles you can get with the software. Oh, I love it. Okay, I like this one. And what I'm using to paint this one is the draw behind brush too, so that I can like put some little colors behind it. And then I'm going to use another color to put color in front of it. But because I'm coloring on the color art, it always stays um, under the line art. Yay. I think the hedgehog is my favorite now. Okay, I think the hedgehogs. Um, okay, let's look at the chat now that this little hedgehog thing is over. Um, Do you, we have a question. Do you have any video that explains integration plus rendering, please? 
Uh, you will have to be a bit more precise with that because I don't know what you mean with intervision and rendering because there's, it can be a lot of things. <laughs> um, and if, oh, Felix also says, if I would like to make BG designs, well, that's great because if you want to do background designs, we have tools in the software to help you do it. Um, I'm going to go in an empty frame just so you know. We have a guides toolbar, a uh, notable view that allows you to activate a guides, uh, like perspective guides so that you can draw something. So if I want to draw a cute little underwater cave or something for my little fish to live in. Mm -hmm. um, because you know, like the goal of today was to draw little animals as mermaids, mm -hmm. but I can I can be flexible. I'll be flexible. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna draw a <laughs> cave for my little creatures. Let it be known, I am not a background artist at all. Okay, I'm I'm not. But you know, I can I can pretend. Uh, Harmony's gonna help me out with that. So I have my perspective tool. I'm gonna draw like a little cube. Might not be a cube, it might be a rectangle, but it's fine. Um, like this, this, this. That's gonna be the cube where my fish <laughs> will exist. All right, all right, I got this. <laughs> and um, do 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 do. By the way, if you want to make uh, check marks like that with the tick marks with the perspective tool, you can use Alt and you see it's going to lock my guides in place. So even if I press Alt, if I press Alt, even if I lift my pencil, it's still going to keep it centered like that with the perspective line. The more you know, right? So then if, that, if this was my uh, cave for my fishes, I could be like, okay, well, this is where the bed will be because they sleep in beds in underwater because it makes sense. And then you can start to kind of build the more, more or less your <laughs> little uh, things there. Or maybe it's, a, maybe it's a table where they eat. I don't know. I don't do backgrounds. And then they're going to have another cube because it's the only thing I can draw. And this is going to be their wardrobe. <laughs> And uh, now to make it more fish-like, I will remove my perspective guide uh, little tool and I'm going to draw sea things. So the carpet will be uh, shaped like a manta ray because they're amazing. And, you know, maybe there's like a starfish thing on the wall and if it's not on perspective enough you can always skew it <laughs> with your select tool to make it fit like the perspective of your background or we also have a cool perspective tool so if i wanted to do like a carpet or something you could also use you could also draw like some things i'm going to draw a happy carpet and you could use your select tool here. And we have a perspective tool that you can choose. And you can always like flatten things on the ground and stuff to have them work in perspective, which is kind of cool. But yeah, if you want to do backgrounds, we have tools to help you out. And then you can go to edit. I know you can go to uh, file export and render it as a layout image so that you can import it into like Photoshop or something to paint it. It's pretty great. Um, yeah, as uh, Tunboom says in the chat, we have about like 10 minutes-ish left. So if you have any last minute questions, fill them in because otherwise I will be gone and you will not get answers because I will not be there to answer these questions. Yay. Um, let's see the chat in Twitch and in YouTube.
Okay, so for the rest of the time, then I will continue to color these lovely animals. And if you have any questions, you can let me know. But yeah, I'm going to color these little things in. This is, yeah, we need a little bit of, of orange. Orange is great. This one, I'm going to do the opposite. It's going to have a very textured line art, but I'm going to give it a very flat coloring because that could make it interesting. Do you have a favorite so far in the chat, people? Favorite sea animal? Give it some little eyes. Check the chat. Did I drink water today? I did drink water today. Thank you. I hope everybody here drank water today. Mm -hmm. I actually have a water bottle on my desk. I guess it's important to stay hydrated. Because otherwise we become sand. And that's not great. Almost done. This is going quicker than I thought. I got this, I got this. So people in the chat, what are some of your favorite features of Harmony? Huh? Why do you like this software? Or why? what are you curious about if you've never tried it yet? If you never tried it, you should try it because it's pretty great. Oh, we have an answer in the chat. So lip sync would be your favorite up, uh, um, thing to do in the social. That's great. Oh, yeah, the 3D stage is really neat. That's so great to be able to put all of those in different seat space. I think that's what I'm going to do to finish this. That's a great idea. Thank you. Okay, so if we take all of our creatures and I set them on different layers, I'm going to call them one, two, three, four, five, six, because time is of the essence. And I'm going to get all my little animals one by one. Starting with the little hippo, because it's cute. I'm gonna put it on its own layer. Perfect. I'm gonna get my little thing here, put it on its own layer as well. Then this one too. And we're gonna create a cool multiplane with them and we're gonna walk through them with the camera. Ooh. I think my favorite one is the ferret. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Now they're all here. I'm going to make sure that they all appear on my whole scene. And give them all a peg. To do that, I'll go into no view. Whoop. 
to give all your things a different peg, uh, you can do control, <laughs> you can do control shift P, give them all their own pegs. And then if you want to unite them under the same peg, you hit control P. Then you just have to give them all their little pivot point that makes sense. Perfect. And now all I have to do <laughs> is set them in Z space, my top view. I'm going to take my different animals using the maintain size tool. I'm going to shift them in place. So now you're not seeing anything. But in reality, all these animals are being pulled in space. So you don't see anything change in your camera view. But if I bring in my perspective view, oh, 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 you're going to see that actually, if I rotate, ooh, they're now being shifted in space. So I'm going to put my camera to the side just so that you see. Uh, in my camera view, I don't see any changes with my characters. But in reality, they're getting near and far in my perspective view. All right, so now that I shifted them in place, woo Um. I will go back in my camera view, and if I give my scene a camera, and I give it a peg, I'll be able to zoom in my scene. And um, if I find my camera, there you go, and zoom in, and we're gonna navigate. It's gonna be it's gonna be quite an experience, okay? So people like make sure you sit sit sit, sit well on your seat and. Whoa, this is amazing. <laughs> Our little animals, they're they're there. They're swimming in the ocean. Whee! So yeah, this is what we do on my streams. I'm sorry. Uh we do fun things like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope you liked it. And uh, that will be it for today. <laughs> Unless anyone has a question, let me look at the chat. Maybe I can give that little ferret a color. It's not fair. It doesn't have any color. What color do we have now? We don't have any red, so this one is going to be red. And the fit and the bird one is going to be dark blue. Okay, now that's better. Phenomenal energy and animation. Okay, so I hope you had fun, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. And don't forget to check all our other streams, because they're pretty great. And we have one, I think, tomorrow. So check out our schedule on Twitch, and you can never miss a beat. Bye-bye. <laughs>